Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, for those messengers with the last name Easy, sorry to break the trend. My last name ends with I O. But uh, thank God, uh, thankful for being here, and uh, we're all celebrating Jesus' death and resurrection. Uh, the title of my testimonial uh, message is Alive Again, and my key verse is verse 24. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. My passage today, as you heard, is about the prodigal son. And uh, this is uh, the story in my own words and how it applies to my life. There was, a, uh, there was a father with two sons. The older one seemed to be trustworthy and honored his father. The younger son, more of a knucklehead. He rebelled and collected his inheritance to travel far away before eventually wasting it on partying and being foolish. Then came a famine in the land and he completely ran out of money. Everything that his father gave him was gone. So he found himself as being a pig keeper, having to take care of somebody else's pigs. He was so hungry that he thought of eating pig food. When he came back to his senses, it occurred to him, though I don't deserve it, I might as well go back home and ask to work for my dad. At least he treats his workers well. And at least I won't be starving anymore and I won't have to eat pig food. So he walked back home and he rehearsed his apology. By this point, the father was certain that his son did not survive the famine. But then one day, he saw someone walking down the road. It was his son. He was not dead. The father ran to him, embraced his son, and kissed him all over. Then the son began his speech. Dad. I don't deserve to be your son. Maybe I could come and work for you. <clears throat> but before he can finish, the father called his servants, go grab him the nicest robe, new sandals, and a fancy ring on his finger. They were to prepare the best food for a banquet. It was time to celebrate. Later that day, the older brother had arrived from a long day working in the field to discover his loser of a brother had come home and they were celebrating him. He was pretty angry. I mean, think about it, right? The older son has always been faithful to his father and he never received this type of party. I gotta be honest, I'd probably be a little ticked off myself. So he probably thought, this is ridiculous. So he refused to join the party. So the father later finds the older brother outside and says, son, you are already in our family. Everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate your brother because he was lost and now he's found. He was dead, and now he's alive. This is how the story relates to my past life. Throughout high school and college, 
I was too busy chasing after women and partying. The pleasures of this world became my God. I was extremely selfish and only cared about the desires of the flesh. I had no direction in life and everything was unstable. In spite of earning two degrees and receiving two aviation licenses, I ended up working for a friend of mine who owns a trailer park that holds 600 mobile homes. My job was to detail every mobile home that had been vacated. It was one of the nastiest jobs I have ever worked in. Those mobile homes were extremely gross. Roaches everywhere, poop stains all over the bathroom, and rats crawling on from underneath the floor. And again, although I had completed college, my sinful way of, li of living led me down this road. I was scrubbing away dirty mobile homes that were infested with unwelcome creatures. Whenever I tried to pursue a better alternative, I felt like God kept closing the door on me. I could not land a better job and I could not stabilize my finances. In fact, my sinful way of living kept hindering me from becoming fruitful. I wanted God's blessings without having to repent from my sinful way of living. So similar to this story, I too came back to my senses. I no longer wanted to live like this. So finally, I surrendered myself to God by getting on my knees and crying out to him, literally. It was after this point where God began to work in my life. By repenting from my sinful way of living, God not only forgave me, but also reinstated me as his child with many blessings. When our hearts are full of sin and filth, we have no room to welcome God. It's like it reached this full capacity. Therefore, we need to cut off the things that hinders us so that we can make room to welcome God. As soon as I began to eliminate my sinful habits and offered my sacrifices to God, God began to work in me. <clears throat> uh, today, I stand before you as a reinstated man of God. Uh, though I don't deserve it, uh, God has given me the best robe, a ring on my finger, and sandals on my feet. I have been given a new life where I have led the children's ministry and prepared messages within my church group. Uh, I also serve one-on-one -on -one Bible study with one person faithfully uh, outside of church. I am part of uh, the Air Force National Guard, and I work for a highly known airlines company. Additionally, after three months of marriage preparation, having to study Tim Keller's The Meaning of Marriage, my beautiful wife Liz and I will be celebrating a first year of our marriage anniversary next week. Uh, it's worth noting uh, that Liz is a great woman of God, and she's nothing like the women I was chasing in my past. Uh, also, after multiple attempts, uh, God enabled me to pass a military aviation exam just recently. Uh, I can, uh, thank you, I, I can now become a commission officer and I'm currently working on my application to apply for a pilot position. I'd like for you all to please recognize that this lost son could not have turned his life around if it wasn't for God's love. 
Jesus wants the world to see outsiders the way God sees them, as son and daughters that are being reclaimed from death. Jesus' kingdom community is wide open to anybody. The word of God is real. God is real. Come to him in prayer. Come to him through Bible study and surround yourselves with spiritual people who can guide you towards God's direction because God wants to celebrate you returning to him. I pray that you all may surrender yourselves to God by getting on your knees and crying out to him. Hold on to his word with a grip hand. Let the word of God grow in you so that he may form you, occupy your heart, and shine the, his light in all the dark areas in your life. You gain everything when you come to God. You have to lose it all to gain it all. My key verse that I hold on to is Proverbs 16, 3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Let me pray. Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for bringing me back and reclaiming me from my life of sin. Father, at this time, we ask that your name may be glorified through the testimonies that we are about to listen to. May these testimonies reinforce your power and love that our lives can indeed change when we repent and come back to you. One word, I was dead, but I am alive again. In Jesus we pray, amen.